Hello, my little gorgeous spring chicken. Today, I'm going to be talking about things you should never do. Maybe four, maybe five, maybe six things that you should never, 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 never do with a man that I would never do with a man that you should never do with a man because why would we do these things with a man for a man to a man? It's not a good idea. She sips her black coffee with no creamer, as you guys say in America, if you are in America. Listen, those of you who want to and are watching this at the start of July, you must join my Become Her eight-week course. It's $50 a week or less less than $50 a week. A coaching course about feminine energy. Find it in the description box, but we move. Never do this with a man. Try and find a man because you are desperate. Or when you are desperate is more the apt version of saying it. When you are desperate and trying to find a relationship, you will attract a who? A who? A predator or a narcissist. That's right, ladies and germs. When you are trying to find someone from desperate energy, number one, it's not attractive to people who are healthy. It is attractive to predators and narcissists. So when you are desperate, you will settle for things that are less. You will settle for people who do not bring anything into your life. And you will fall for people who are predatory. Narcissists love to be with somebody who they can manipulate, people who are empathic and people who are searching for healing. And if you are in a place of weakness in your current life and you are trying to date, it is not advisable. Get to a place where you are happy and proud of the person that you are exemplifying yourself as, the character that you are appearing as, not a victim, not a broken hoof deer lying in the savanna because you will attract that. Also, if that does not concern you and you are, don't mind a little bit of a narcissist or a privy to a little bit of a predator, you know, stalking out for people who are weak, then I'll put it this way. Nobody who is sexy, attractive, amazing, or nobody in general, except for those types, vampiric types, loves somebody who is desperate. Somebody who's desperate is hard to be with. They're constantly clingy. They always want your approval. It is not something a healthy person wants to be with. So if you are a woman and you're seeking a relationship with a man, make sure you're not coming from a desperate place. Make sure you're not coming from a place of, oh, I've got 7.5 children and I need a provider or I'm 35 years old and I need to get pregnant. You always need to buffer yourself as a woman and a feminine energy woman at that with paradigms which protect you. So if you want a man in your life, you should want and need a man in your life because it enhances your life, not because you just can't survive without one. If you're feeling weak and in need of counsel and attention, the narcissist will smell that out. You want to present the best of you, the most resourceful version of you to a relationship and therefore attract a more resourceful person. There's a kingfisher on my balcony. That is quite amazing. The best way to do this is write a list of the type of person you want. Traits, looks, hobbies, six, five, finance, trust fund, blue eyes, and then write down what type of person they would want in return, okay? Because a lot of us write these lists till the cows come home about the type of guy that they want. He's going to be this, he's going to be that, he's going to be empathic, he's going to be generous, he's going to be gorgeous, he's going to be all of these things. And then it turns around and you look at yourself and your list of traits and you are not the type of woman he wants. So the second list you need to write is what type of woman would he write on his list of traits that he wants. And now there's a lorikeet parrot on my balcony, okay? I just want you to know that I am Snow White in here. I'm Snow White in this bitch. These parrots are all coming around me. Create your own universe of happiness and you will attract the man you want. If you want a man who's attracted to desperate women, then go about your bad self and find him when you're desperate. If not, never do that. Number two, never be with a man who pushes you away physically or makes you feel ick. We've never discussed this on this podcast, but there is science has proven that if somebody makes you feel yucky by their odor and scent, that means you're not biologically compatible, even if you're not planning to have children together, because that is what this trait is for. It means your DNA doesn't match. It's still not a good idea to push through and be like, it's okay. 
he smells like shit, but he's a good provider and he is good looking on paper. Do you know how many men are good looking on paper that I don't find attractive and how many strange looking men I do find attractive? I don't mean in everyday life I find strange looking men attractive. I mean throughout the history of my life I found men who aren't quintessentially attractive to be attractive just because of turns out to be bi biology I don't know you know on TikTok and a lot of places there's been this conversation and this rhetoric about a few things that if he makes you sick or if you often get what are they called what are they called you know tract infections UTIs it's your body telling you not to be with him and your pH doesn't match I need you to look out for a man who's good on paper, who's you're forcing yourself to be with, or just because you've been with him for a long time, or you like him a lot. I'm not going to name names, but I did have a partner in the past who I felt that way about. He was just really good on paper, but I was like, I see him more as a friend, but surely romantic relationship starts with friendships. But every time he'd be like trying to hug me, I'm like, oh God, please, why, why is this happening? And not in, not in a major way, but like in an underlying slight way where I was trying to convince myself that it was a good thing. When Another trait is you might find him attractive and all might be gravy, but you start to get ugly around him. They say that you can tell how good a man treats his woman by how good or bad she looks around him. When you feel sick around him, when you get ugly around him, and by ugly I mean like disheveled, like not good, your skin is dull, your hair is dull, you're just not it. That might not be the one for you. Follow the ick, ladies. You need to follow the ick. It is the smell, their total package. Like, for example, I know this is a bit weird, but with my partner, I don't think he smells. It's like the most bizarre thing. And I asked him and he feels the same. He probably lied to me, but whatever. As if a man would ever tell a woman that she smells. But I, I just genuinely don't find, like, I can tell. I can tell that he, you know, has been working out or sweats, but it doesn't smell to me. Let me tell you, an average person, like when they work out or whatever, an average man stinks to me, okay? So that is very, very important. You need to have the trifecta of, of being attracted to that person body-wise, and then also soul and mind. The soul ick is like, you know, when you look at someone and you genuinely, your soul just feels at peace being alone with them? But the soul ick is like when you don't really want to be around them alone and you'd rather be with other friends. That's like like your soul's not at peace when you're around them. Like you're trying to look out the window, always trying to get out. And the mind connection is really important when you can just bounce ideas off each other and it's like a mastermind and it's so exciting. A lot of times the mind ick is like you're, li you're listening to him and you're like, WTF, ick. You know, you're talking about stocks again. I can't, you know. So don't, you need to follow the ick. So number one, never lead with desperate energy. And number two, follow the ick. Number three, on de toi. Never create a codependent relationship. It's so hard for us ladies to not do that. People who can't live without each other. It's Romeo and Juliet love. Oh my God. Do you know how good it feels being female and like being in that kind of Romeo and Juliet scenario? We can't live without each other. You're texting him. He's texting you. You're on top of each other, like communication wise all the time. But always, always, always mark my word. Men get sick of it. They get sick of it because you start creating control in an environment as a woman. Women who enjoy this kind of like closeness in a relationship are often anxiously attached. If you haven't seen all my anxiously attached content, browse my content, especially my YouTube channel. You will find a lot there. But I'm telling you, if you're going to lead with your anxious attachment, it's going to create a relationship where right now you're like otters frolicking in the water. But sooner rather than later, he's going to start to run away from you and you're going to start chasing because you're going to crave that closeness. Women who are in that kind of codependent relationship love to create an element of guilt. They love to lead with those. I've had your two children. I've had your seven children. How could you do that to me? I've done this. Why would you do that? I've done that one. You could do that one. I've given you my best years. All of that kind of rhetoric or... or I've done this. How could you be looking at someone else? All of that stuff. And my question to you is this. It, those things all might be true. You might be doing all these things for him. And let's take it down a notch. Let's forget the children and all that stuff. You're just dating. And you're like, I moved cities for you. I canceled my friend's dinner for you. I've done this for you. If that is true and he takes it in and he's like, oh, yes, I better be with Jessica because, or I better be good to Jessica because she canceled her dinner plans and didn't see her family for Christmas. Like, do you want someone to be with you because you th they feel sorry for you? Is that the dynamic you want, that they feel sorry for you? Do you don't want to be that kind of like 
queen princess whatever it is that you guys call goddess that he's chasing you want to be the creature that he feels sorry and guilty for oh yes quick i better not text any other women because she's given up five years of her life oh alas what can we do better be faithful to jessica you like want to be that guilt inducing shrew no i don't think so that even sometimes when you do feel like he owes you a lot for what you've done it's better to swallow that than to exemplify that because if he already doesn't feel that you've done so much and therefore he owes you some kind of loyalty or, or love or appreciation like when women say you don't ever tell me that i'm this anymore you don't well you know what what you want him to tell you because he feels sorry for you you need to have options in your life with or without him and giving somebody freedom is the key. If you have options in your life of where you can go, people you can be with, things you can do, that's why you can never give up on centers that make you happy, yoga, whatever it is. I said yoga because for me it's yoga and I've abandoned it since having a baby because my baby's glued to me, glued, glued. And when I've got a nanny, I'm working, okay? So that's my own choice. That's my yoga at the moment is this podcast and creating things for you, okay? Number four, agree to a partner that is below you. A woman in her feminine energy and her goddess energy never agrees to a partner that is below her because why? We, when we start to disrespect a guy, that's when everything goes to goes to shit. It goes to hell in a handbasket. You need to really, 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 truly respect the man that you're with because that leads to a really healthy masculine feminine dynamic. It does not mean he's going to be rich. It does not mean he's going to be tall. It does not mean he's going to be whatever it is, blue eyes, trust fund, yeah? It's just got to be something you respect. If you agree to be with a partner who is below you in your own concept, you will berate him. You will become a version of a person that nobody wants to be with and it is about you. It is about your life story. It is about your love story. So you don't want to be that woman. Be in a partnership that degrades the both of you to unhealth and unsuccess is not the best idea. So you've chosen this man and you do not amplify each other, which is kind of like number four four point two, like an element of this concept, okay? If you've chosen to be in a relationship where both of you sit on the sofa and don't encourage each other and just delve into comfort and ridiculousness and don't have accountability to each other that's another version like choosing a relationship that is below you or denigrates how you look and act and feel and your success is not the one you would rather often in these types of relationships have a homer simpson that is loyal to you with a beer belly than a man who is slightly out of your league like choosing a man who is not above you in some way and is below you is that homer simpson effect where you're like oh my god nobody would want this slob anyway so I will just, you know, he'll be loyal to me. It's from a point of, of, you know, basically you'd rather have a Homer Simpson at home than somebody who is in any way out of your reach because you just want to, that feeling of security and faithfulness and loyalty and he's not inspiring you. You are not achieving new things. Sometimes inspiration comes at the cost of slight discomfort or slight feeling of, unease but it's worth it are you getting the worst of him because you are scared to push yourself to be with somebody who you actually admire lastly women who are feminine energy and know what they want and are all in their goddess energy never suffer in a relationship if you're suffering in a relationship something has gone awry you need to change it if it doesn't add to you you don't need it in your life that is a fundamental rule ladies adhere to it I love you lots like jelly tots and I'll speak to you on the next one. Bye. I am all about the good fats, the omega fats and all of those good things. I had the founder of Fatty15 on my podcast and she introduced me to C15, which is an incredible essential fatty acid, the first one to be discovered in 90 years. And studies have shown it is three times better, broader and safer than omega-3. So I am on that train firmly and aggressively i'm taking this every day because i am breastfeeding at the moment those healthy fats help me to sleep better they're they're good for long-term metabolic health liver and heart function the mitochondrial function is also very very important they help you with energy and all those good things the only thing inside fatty 15 is c15 and it's 100 percent pure C15 works in multiple ways. It repairs age-related damage to cells, protects them from future breakdowns, boosts mitochondrial energy outputs, and activates pathways to the body. 
Check out the episode I did before. Fatty15 is on a mission to replenish your C15 levels and restore your long-term health. You can get an additional 15% off their 90-day subscription starter kits by going to fatty15.com slash beingher and using code beingher at checkout. That's an additional 15% off their 90-day subscription starter kits by going to fatty15.com slash beingher and using code beingher at checkout. Okay, I'm truly well and truly, truly, truly in my 30s, okay? Because I'm so excited about the sponsor. I like, I can't contain myself. It is our place. This is a company that is going to just revolutionize your kitchen. Basically, it's a a non-toxic kitchenware and appliance brand named Our Place. Non-toxic, healthy, and sustainable. And it is cute. It is so cute. I get really confused about what the right thing is to do for, for kitchenware and what the right thing is to not do and all the chemicals and all these things. And I've got young children and I don't want them eating chemicals. Did you know that most cookware and appliances are made from forever chemicals, which literally damage, damage your health? Our Place is a mission-driven and female-founded brand that makes beautiful kitchen products that are healthy and sustainable. Their products are made without PFAS and Teflon, which is a forever chemical that goes into your body, leaches into your organs, and yuck, yuck, yuck. In comparison, most of today's nonstick pans contain the PFAS, also known as forever chemicals, which are under increasing global scrutiny for their impact on the environment and our health, yuck. And most cookware brands have them because they're low cost and they're easy to make. Leading the change, our place has always been PFAS free, offers the most durable, toxic free, ceramic coated, and ensuring healthy, safe cooking experiences for you and your children and your family, which is amazing. So guys, this brand has five-star reviews, 75,000 five-star reviews. It's no joke. They've been mentioned in New York Times, Bon Appetit and more. They are used by Selena Gomez, Sedeva Beckham, and they are cute. The colors are ad- adorable, like adorable is an understatement. Go to fromourplace.com and enter my code being her to check out and receive 10% off site wide. That's from ourplace.com. Uh, use the code being her. Our place offers a hundred day free trial with free shipping and returns. So that is incredible and very, very wonderful. Again, from our place, like from our place, our place and enter code being her 10% off. Enjoy. you. Do you want a bra that's sexy or a bra that's comfortable? you got to choose, okay? you got to choose sexy or comfortable. Okay, you don't actually have to choose. Thanks to Third Love, you can have both. Third Love has started to take all the frustration, ick, and ugh, out of bra shopping. That's why they make solutions for every bra problem, aka problem. Their bras make it easy for you to bring back the perkiness in your boobs, the, the amazing smooth line, the t-shirt strapless effect that you want. Their headquarters are in San Francisco, and they're made from premium materials, actual bras. They put every style through hours of wear testing on real women, including themselves, before it's given the stamp of approval, boob approval. Comfort and support are guaranteed. It's time you get your problem solved. Visit thirdlove.com and get $15 off your order with code PODCAST15. I think it's really essential for confidence and how you feel about yourself that your boobs aren't either sagging or spilling out the top of your bra. I have been between every size on the planet through breastfeeding and being a teenager and then growing up and then all of these things. They even have half sizes and they have a virtual fitting room. So the problems should be well and truly gone. Get your problem solved. Visit thirdlove.com and get $15 off your order with code PODCAST15. Enjoy, ladies. Enjoy, ladies. 